I still have to distress this too, but I love this. A lot. In a new look. Very sweet, and I usually bring biscuit down here to do my sign off. Well, tonight I'm going to bring bacon, right? Hi, YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In this video, I'm going to continue my Back to the Basics series. So, this is the second video. My first video, if you go back to my first video, was just the one prior to this one, I talked about prepping your pieces of furniture before you paint them. And I went all into that, how to do that correctly. In this video, we're gonna talk about paint brushes. What paint brushes have I found over the years to work the best, along with other types of brushes for other methods like applying top coats and applying stain. So we're gonna go right into this one. Let's go. Okay guys, we're on the other side of my workshop and I am just about to embark on painting the side of this dresser and I thought, you know what? Let's start the second video for my Back to Basics series. Somebody mentioned in the previous video on my prepping video like about paintbrushes, what paintbrushes I use and what I would recommend. So if you're new to my channel, I've been doing this for a little over 12 years. And when I first started out, like many people, I just put an Amazon chalk paint paint brushes and up came these. I used to paint with these. So the first few years I painted with these round chalk paint brushes and I always was frustrated with these for a couple of reasons. They shed and I hated that. I was always picking out bristles in my paint finish. Couldn't stand that. Right now I can see, oh my gosh, there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's probably 20 bristles that I can see right here that are about to fall out. So I'm making my point. These brushes shed a lot. I always found I couldn't get a smooth finish. I always saw brush strokes within my painted finish. So then I saw a person that paints furniture recommend these other brushes. And I fought it for the longest time because I am one of these people, whatever's trending, whatever's popular, I like to do the exact opposite. I, I've just always been built this way. There's something probably deeply psychological to that, um, I'm sure, um, probably trauma related. I don't know, um, but I've always kind of beat to my own drum and I'm like, okay, everybody's using those brushes. Well, I'm not gonna use them. And they were a little spendy on the higher end. So I just kept painting with these. And then one day I was just like, I've had it, I've had it. I'm done trying to pick bristles out of my finish. So, okay, so here are the brushes that I only paint with now. I have been only painting with one brand of brushes for the last, I'm gonna say six plus years. They're the Klingon brushes. If you haven't heard of them, they're absolutely amazing. I did a review of them after I bought my first one. You'd have to go into the depths of my YouTube videos to find them. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the link to that old video under the description of this video so you can find it there. But this is what the Klingon brushes look like. You can tell I have really put this one through a lot of work. Look at that, the finish is like eating away <laughs> um, on the handle of this brush. They have all these different sizes. They have short handled ones. I call these my little chubba wubba brushes. I love these. I'm finding, maybe it's because I've been doing this for like over 12 years, my hand can really start to cramp up from painting furniture. And I find the shorter handle ones, um, I don't get the cramping with the shorter ones. So if you're looking for a good short handled brush, this one would be it by Klingon. Now Klingon brushes all have different names to them. There's a letter and then there's a number. So for instance, this is the F30. It's their rectangular one. Then you go up a little bit in size. This is their F40, a little bit larger. And this is their big one, F50. And I don't even know what this one is. Oh, this is another F50. I have two F50s. So I have ordered quite a few over the years. I have six of these. Now these are more expensive than your traditional paint brushes. 
I will speak highly of these brushes. I've had them for so many years. Look at them, they're still going strong. The bristles do not come out of these brushes. That's the number one reason I wanted to try these brush brushes because I was so frustrated with those other ones. And I must say not one bristle has come out of any of these brushes. I absolutely love them and I can't talk highly enough about this brand of paint brushes. So if you're just starting out, trust me, get yourself one of these. I mean, either start with their small short one. This is called the S30. I think the S stands for short. Not sure, I'd have to check with Klingon with that, but this is their S30, get one of these, or get a medium sized rectangular one, that way it can cover a good area on your piece of furniture. Um, this is the F40, so that's the mid-range one, or start with that one. I get such a smooth finish with these brushes, people will ask me all the time, do you spray your furniture? And I'm gonna take that as a compliment because people see how smooth my finish gets on my furniture and it, it's these, it's these brushes, I'm telling you. So not only do they not shed, they're super durable, they're, oh, they're easy to clean, super easy to clean, and they give me a smooth finish. So if you're just starting out, take the plunge, order one of these, you're gonna see a major difference in your finish and how you apply your paint on your furniture. So you're gonna watch me right now. We're gonna to start to paint this piece on the side and I'm just gonna show you how well these brushes perform. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna use two of the Klingon brushes here because I want to cover a large surface. So I'm gonna use the F50, which is the larger of the rectangular one, and then a smaller one. I just found another Klingon brush. I've got two more, so pardon me, I have eight Klingon brushes, so. Um, <laughs> that's how much I love them. And then this is the F30. It's a little teeny one. So if I can get into these little detailed areas up in here. So that's what I usually do. I usually paint with two different sizes of brushes, one bigger and then one smaller. So let me get my stool situated here. No, I want to go down. There we go. All right. So we are going to get started. And this paint is jet black. It's the one hour um, enamel paint by Wise Owl. Love this brand. I've used it on a few pieces. Great coverage with this paint. But I'm not here to talk about paint. I'm here to talk about paint brushes. So you can see here, I'm getting a nice smooth finish with this Klingon brush. It holds paint really well, distributes it evenly. I'm not getting any drip marks, which is really important as well. Look at that. And I just overlap my paint strokes just a little bit. Kind of like if you, if you mow the lawn, you kind of overlap a little bit. I also will lightly, 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 did I say lightly? Uh, feather sand in between my paint coats, if need be, if need be. So if I feel like the paint got globbed up in an area or I feel dust nubs, then I will go over really, really lightly because you don't want to burn through your coat of paint. So that's why I'm stressing super light. I usually do it with either 400 or 600 grit around a felt block. That's how I do my sanding in between coats. And that's a great trick to get really smooth finishes is to do that. Sometimes you don't need it, it all depends. But as you can see here, this brush performs amazing. And I will post a link below my video description of where you can order these on Amazon. I believe you can order them on, on, on Amazon. I've ordered them from other creators in the past. Some people have websites. So it's been a while since I've purchased a Klingon brush. So I think they're on Amazon now. I believe the company is based in the UK, which is kind of cool. So, yep, I was converted to a trendy brush, which I didn't want to do, 
And I didn't want to jump, jump on any bandwagon. You know how that is. Someone introduces a new product and you're like, all right, sure. Sure, the brush doesn't shed. Sure, it's this great thing. Well, I got to tell you, this one lived up to the hype so much that I bought eight brushes in total so far. There you go. There's my first coat. Smooth, went on great. Well, just this section right here. I'm going to continue painting, but I don't want to bore you with all my jibber jabber. So there you go. Paintbrush, Klingon brush. Now we're going to go on to some other brushes that I use that I think are great. Okay, a second brush that I use quite a bit is just a basic two inch foam brush. I use this to apply all my top coats. This is another thing I get asked by people. I do a lot of sanding the natural wood on the top piece of furniture, also on drawer fronts. You can see with both these pieces behind me and I get a lot of people that ask me, do you spray your top coat? Cause it looks like a mere glass finish. I simply use a two inch foam brush. Most of the time I wrap a foot nylon booty around the brush. I might be doing that for my third video here to show you that method close up and just strictly concentrate on that method. I might be doing that. So you might be going, what is that? I'll show you in my next video, but two inch foam brush. I use, I use this product a lot in my oil based finishes. This is by general finishes. Armor Seal. This stuff is amazing. Love it. I used it to do the top coat on this dresser, also on this gorgeous antique buffet behind me, and I simply applied it with a two inch foam brush. So if you're starting out, cling on brush to paint, two inch foam brush to apply your top coat. I also use a two inch foam brush when I apply my stains. I know some people like to apply a stain with a rag to each their own. For me, um, I prefer to use a brush. I find I waste less product. I did try when I first started out using a rag and I found that I used a lot of stain that way. And I find using the two inch foam brush, I'm wasting less stain. So I'm trying to think other products that I use this with. Stain top coats, yeah strictly this brush right here. So I ordered these on Amazon for sure. They run me about 20 cents, maybe 15 cents per brush. I usually get a big packet, like 48 brushes or so, because I find I really go through them. So I gotta keep my overhead as low as possible, so I do buy them in bulk. So there's your second brush. On to the third brush. Okay, the third most popular brush that I use when refinishing furniture is a simple two inch chip brush. So I'll use these to apply shellac when I'm prepping. Shellac comes in two forms. It either comes in a quart can and I dip this into the shellac and I'll apply the shellac that way. The reason I use these with shellac is because shellac usually ruins a brush. Unfortunately, it's one of those products that I use that once I'm done using the brush, I have to pitch it. So I wanna use something cheap and I get these also um, on Amazon. And if you're interested in ordering these, I'll put the link below the video description along where you can order Klingon brushes, foam brushes, and these brushes. I also will apply wax with a two inch foam brush. So this is my two inch foam brush with a dark wax on it. What's great about this is I can continue to use this brush for multiple applications. It's still soft and I can continue to use this. So I feel good about that, that I don't have to pitch this after I use it with wax. I used wax on the shell part of this buffet. This is painted dark black, and I applied an espresso dark wax with this brush on this piece. So that's another brush that I use quite a bit when I refinish furniture. Okay, and the last type of brush that I would advise anybody starting out with refinishing furniture, painting furniture to get is detailed brushes, okay? Don't laugh. These are all my detailed brushes, okay? Uh, you're gonna need these. From getting into the little nooks and crannies of pieces, to little detailed work on ornate areas, to applying like gold gilding wax on pieces of furniture, you're gonna need all these little, little buddies to help you get the job done. So you'll collect these over time. So don't think that you have to go out and buy, I don't know how many I have here, 50 detail brushes, you don't. It's just because I've been doing this for many, many years and this is how many I've collected. So yeah, so detail brushes. 
So I hope that helps anybody who's starting out with painting furniture. Again, this is my back to basic series and I wanted to talk paint brushes with you and brushes in general. That's really that, I can't believe that's like really the only brushes that I use. It's Klingon brushes to paint your pieces of furniture, the foam brushes to apply stain and top coats, chip brushes to apply shellac when it comes to prepping furniture and also to apply wax as a top coat. And then fourth are all my little detailed brushes. I hope this video has been helpful for those who are just starting out with painting furniture or refinishing furniture. If you guys have any comments or any additions that you would like to add, I'd love to know what do you use when it comes to brushes um, and when you apply finishes. I like to know what other people use. Again, this is just what I use here in my workshop. I would love to know what others use. If you've been doing this for a while, you may have a paintbrush or other brushes and methods that you use to apply top coat stain. I'd love to hear them. Let me hear you in the comment section. If you guys have any questions, leave me a question. I'm happy to help you guys here. That's what I do here at my channel. I'm here to help those that are just starting out and the daunting world of refinishing furniture. There's a lot to take in. That's why I'm starting this series called Back to Basics. This is the second video. Um, I think my next one, I think I am. Um, if you guys are interested, let me know. I'm gonna show you how I apply my top coats using the two inch foam brush and a nylon booty over that brush and why I do it. So thank you for joining me here at Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. on me, I forgot to bring one of my dogs down here to do the sign off, probably because it's gotten colder here. Yesterday in New Hampshire, I think it was almost 80 degrees. Today, I think the high is barely 50. So my dogs are upstairs, literally snug as a bug, sitting on an electric blanket. Here's Biscuit. He's our little five pound chihuahua. He's already got the chills being down here. I know, it's so cool. you look like E.T. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So usually I bring one of our dogs down here to do the sign off. I think the last video we had Chunkamunka bacon down here. So this is Biscuit. We love him so much, don't we boo-boos? He used to be named Travis. He came from Texas out of a rescue and we named him Biscuit. We've had him for a very long time. He will be nine years old coming up in March. I know. You're considered elderly, but we don't think he's elderly. He looks like a little baby, doesn't he? He looks like a little puppy, but we love him so much. He's my boo-boo. All right, you guys, till I see you guys soon, I'll be release releasing my other video very shortly here on how to apply that top coat because I'm almost ready to do it on this piece. I have to stain the top. Well, I have to sand it again, and then we'll be staining it and then I'll show you how I apply the top coat with the foam brush and the nylon booty. So until we see you guys very soon, we say, what do we say? We say toodaloo. Bye.